Trigger warning. This episode contains content about suicide. If you or a loved one are struggling with suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or message the Crisis Text Line at 741-741. Both programs are free and provide confidential support 24-7. I almost took my own life in September of 2015. I had gotten to a point where between my best friend's suicide, my father's suicide, walking away from my career. And I'm pretty, I'm an open book. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have gone from having a lot of money to no money. I walked away from it all. And so that nest egg went away. Mm -hmm. And you know how when you consult with artists, some months are better than others. So Mm -hmm. I almost lost my home twice. Mm. And I was like, okay, God, I don't know what else to do. I think I'm done. Welcome to this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie. I'm Crystal Renee Hazlett, and today I am talking about silencing the shame with Shanti Das. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I can't believe I'm sitting on your couch. (laughs) I'm so proud of you. I'm like, it's weird for me to like think of you like as this like media personality actress and I just know you from like back in the day in Atlanta and just to see where God has moved in your life and it's an honor to be sitting on thank your couch, you. but I'm so proud of you. No, thank you so much. And when we were going through a list of people, and I was like, we have to have Shanti Das on. Aww. So when I called you, and you were like, absolutely. I was like, she said yes. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. I haven't seen you since our last lunch. I know. Which was yes. lovely. Yes, we got to do that again. Yes, we do. Yes. Um, when I think of you, I think of, I don't look like what I've been through. Mm. You've been through so much. And um, a lot of people don't. Okay to cry on the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, I might need a tissue today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have tissue somewhere. Okay. Um, we'll grab it if we need it. Okay. Um, but a lot of people don't know that you started in the music industry. Like that's when I met you. You were working in the music yeah. industry, and um, you are a mental health advocate. You are a CEO and fo- founder of Silence of Shame, and you have your own podcast called Mebo. Yep, the, the Mebo, Mebo Show. show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So make sure you guys check that out. Okay. Um, you did 25 years, um, you had 10 years at Capitol Records, LaFace Records, Columbia Records, Sony Urban Music, and Universal Motown. Mm-hmm. Wow. Long time. <laughs> That's, you gave a lot of your life to the industry. I did. Wow. Yeah. I remember in 2009, I moved here. And I worked at the front desk of Divine Stevens' mm-hmm. um, office. He that's had, when I met you, because that's when I was yes. really just come back to Atlanta. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And it was, um, I always saw you. You were always, everybody came to you. It was like, you, yeah. And I was like, it's something special about her. But I never knew all the things you had done until mm. later on. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's been a real journey. Yeah. And, you know, I'm an Atlanta native, Mm -hmm. so I grew up here. And to come back and be able to work in the entertainment industry and help to really launch the music scene was a real pleasure and honor. A little surreal. I can imagine. Because I went to Syracuse University. Wow. Way up north. Mm -hmm. Most of my friends, you know, kind of stayed down south. But I just wanted to get away and do something different. And when I was at Syracuse, I started, like, dabbling in radio, mm-hmm. I had a radio show, um, Graveyard Shift Girls, oh, 2 to nighttime. 4 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was assistant promotions director. And then when I came back to Atlanta the summer of my sophomore year, I got my first internship at Capitol Records. Wow. So I was working in the industry in, in college. In college? Going to Jack the Rapper and all the conventions. What? Yeah, so I did that for two summers and then graduated in 1993. You can mm-hmm. call me Auntie Shanti. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm 52 and proud of it. And but, look good. Uh, thank you. Yes. But I came back and worked at Sony Music for free as mm-hmm. an intern, which, you know, if y'all are listening, any up and coming folks want to work in music, sometimes it's okay to work for free to That's get right. their foot in the door. Mm-hmm. And so then after that, because um, I tell people also it's important to keep good relationships. Yes. Right. You don't have to like everybody you work mm-hmm. with, but mm-hmm. try to stay positive and keep the door open. Right. Yeah. If you need to come back and call on somebody. So the guy that the gentleman, Mr. Keith Fry, who was my mentor, mm-hmm. he started consulting with LaFace and L.A. Reed was like, yo, we're looking for a promotions director. We need some help. And 
Wow. Got the job, $30,000 right out of college. You couldn't tell me Look, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I know that's right. And so, working yeah. with greats like L.A. Reid. First record I ever worked was Outcast Players Ball. First record. I did mean, you even understand how I big mm -mm. and monumental? Then, if you remember, it was on the Christmas album. Wow. So, you know, we had a lot of songs. A lot of artists, TLC and Tony Braxton mm -hmm. was on the Christmas album. And this song started, like, getting a lot of good feedback yeah. from DJs. And L.A. was like, well, and, you know, the Dungeon Family, Rico, mm -hmm. Ray, they were like, we should just make this the first single. Wow. And that's kind of how it all kicked off. That's how it kicked off. And you've worked with Outkast. I did. I worked with them on all of their albums. I did the marketing, well, the promotions initially, then mm -hmm. the marketing for the first four albums. Of I have to career. ask you because I am a huge Outkast fan. You? Yes. Ah. Love Andre. I mean, I love Big Boy and yeah, Andre, but Andre just has a piece of my heart. He is just incredible yeah, they both what was special. it like working with them too like so the funny thing history. initially they were just some little teenagers that used to get <laughs> on my last nerve <laughs> on the road they I would come imagine. knock on my door after we get back from promo runs and i'm like y'all need to go to bed <laughs> so they were just you know regular teenagers yeah. but i will say they were hard workers mm -hmm. incredibly creative you know, a lot of times when you think of the music industry and back in the day, mm -hmm. you think of label executives having to, like, give the artist a direction yes. or a sense of self or a personal sense of style. You understand mm -hmm. styling. Mm -hmm. But no, it wasn't like that with them. They knew what they wanted to do. They knew who they were. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of came in to enhance their brilliance and mm -hmm. their greatness along with the Dungeon family. And so that's what I loved about them, mm -hmm. you know. One of the, I think your favorite one of your favorite albums is Aquemini, right? Yes. I think I read that. Yeah. And so what I loved about Aquemini was it was a real combination of the two of them. So mm -hmm. Aquemini yes. stood for Aquarius and Gemini, mm -hmm. and that made the word Aquemini. Yes. So you know, Big Boy being the player and mm -hmm. Andre being the poet, and yeah. it was just like a perfect combination, right? It was a perfect was. storm for a hip hop group and. It was just amazing. And I was there the night in 1995. You know, we're celebrating hip hop 50. Mm -hmm. and yes, we those are. Iconic moments in hip hop. And that night at the Source Awards was when Dre gave that infamous speech. The South got something to say. Yeah. And it, was, it was myself, their manager, Blue Williams, there. And I was the only girl repping with them that night. Wow. And to, to, to date, that picture of us, the three of us, is circulated. Like, mm a gazillion times on social media and yeah. I have to pinch myself sometimes to say I was right there with you them. were right there in the middle of history but they did all the hole in the wall clubs they had to deal with a lot of criticism from people saying mm -hmm. oh they're country we don't like this music wow they weren't always accepted and mm -hmm. nor was southern hip-hop true but you know they put the work in and we did what we had to do mm -hmm. to make them you know household names yes I love that oh my yeah. goodness speaking of artists you work with you also worked with Usher Tony Braxton um, and Usher boy, is he on fire? Right on now. fire! I still have not gotten to Vegas Please, to see him. You gotta go! I am. It's such a good show. I am. Yeah, I saw that you went. I did. Yes, I and he shouted you out. He did. <laughs> and that was a total surprise. Um, yeah. But I was there when we signed him. He was like 15. Yeah. Very early on, doing all his promo mm -hmm. and getting to see his brilliance. Even then, I, I, we knew that Usher had the it factor. He, he's one of the hardest working artists I've ever met. Wow. And he always knew like what he wanted like he always believed in going hard mm -hmm. like no was never an answer for him he would yeah. just figure out a way to yes wow even like he was very involved in the promo ideas what he wore mm -hmm. how he wanted to look just everything that's amazing. very involved so yeah. it's no surprise to me that he'd be doing the super bowl now it's his time are you gonna go i don't know <laughs> you know i don't want to ask somebody for tickets and mm -hmm. that sort of thing I, if i get you know opportunity to find a ticket that is reasonable yes, yes. if not i will be cheering on yeah. from the sidelines of my house with you know watching it on tv but i'm so very proud of him and his I team that. i love that yeah um you released a book in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic mm -hmm. silencing my shame mm -hmm. um and you have built this whole brand around merging the culture and therapy and yeah. uh, mental health, mm -hmm. what was it that made you say, I need to, to bridge this gap? That's a great question. Can I take you back a little bit? Please, yes. So a lot of people don't know that my dad died by suicide mm -hmm. when I was seven months old. Yeah. And that was hard. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to be, say, four or five years old and really understood that my father was deceased and he wasn't coming back, um, I was really angry. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go through the grief process, there are a lot of emotions, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Anger is definitely one of the stages of grief. And so then you add suicide on top of that. It was mm -hmm. embarrassing. 
Mm. And so it's interesting. Uh, my late sister, we used to talk about how when friends would ask us where our dad was, we'd be like, oh, he died. He had a heart attack or right. he had this or he anything other than suicide. suicide. Wow. And so my mom never went to counseling, never went to therapy, which we know has been an issue sometimes for us in the black community. Mm -hmm. is we don't <clears throat> deal with those type of traumas and mm. issues head on when they happen. Right. So fast forward, we all kind of dealt with it on our own. And it was my sister, um, Anjali Maria Das Arnold, who broke the cycle and put herself into therapy mm -hmm. in college. Wow. And this is like that late 80s, early 90s. When it wasn't even like popular. No, nobody yeah. was really talking about it. So mm -hmm. fast forward, I, um, after I left LaFace and moved up to New York City, it was the first time I was working in a more corporate environment and one of the larger labels there. And I was in a kind of a toxic environment at the time. My boss was yelling and cursing all the time. And I just wasn't used to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so once I started dealing with adversity in the workplace, I didn't know how to deal with my emotional side mm -hmm. of things. And so it started bringing back a lot of the feelings of my dad and different mm -hmm. things. And so that was the first time I had ever said, maybe I should just kill myself. Wow. That was in 20, 2000. So that was 23 mm -hmm. years ago. And it scared me because yeah. I knew that there was something in the back of my head that always said, well, when the going got tough, mm -hmm. would that be something I would consider? Wow. So I went to therapy for the first time in mm -hmm. my early 30s and went for about three or four months. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. And I kind of jumped back into my work. I think it was my ego. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, I'm okay. I don't yep. really need to be a therapist that long. Mm -hmm. So I just started doing what I did best. Yeah. And I had some amazing times in New York doing the marketing for Prince for his musicology oh, album, which was Oh my I, I literally goodness. was on tour at Prince. I have to like pinch my Right. <laughs> okay, so, you know, on tour at Prince was really amazing. So wow. I had some good times in New York. But then I think I was still not dealing with my emotions properly like I should have. Mm -hmm. And so, you know how now in the workplace there are resources around yes. mental health or you could talk to the HR department. I didn't do any of that mm -hmm. or really didn't know about any of those resources. So I was internalizing a lot of my stress. Mm. So by the time I had gotten to Universal Motown, Girl, I was making almost a half a million dollars a year, wow. corner office, Range Rover, all the stuff yep. that we think we need and want, mm -hmm. but still not addressing my health concerns. Right. And I say health concerns because sometimes people put mental health in a box. Mm -hmm. It's still our health. Yeah. We have mental health and we have physical health, mm -hmm. right? And so long story short, I was taking naps mm -hmm. at like one o'clock in the middle of the day. That's not like me. Now, you know me yeah, listen. and my work ethic. Yeah, you're I a go-getter. type A personality, <laughs> yes. go-getter. So when I started noticing that, I was like, things just aren't really right. Mm -hmm. And so I remember one day I was in a taxi going to a meeting riding uptown in New York City and my whole right side went numb. Like I couldn't feel my hands, oh my, goodness. my arms, my legs. So it scared me to death. Started yeah. taking all these uh, Tess went to the doctor and had all these like CT scans and MRIs done <clears throat> and I got diagnosed with what was called cervical spinal stenosis and it's a it's directly related to the stress in your body mm. and my sister was like this ain't it mm -mm. you need to rethink what's going on and I thought I had to have surgery on my spine and my back and so shout out to Sylvia Roan who was yes. love you Sylvia who was my boss at the time and she was like well let's figure it out if you need to do surgery mm -hmm. but my sister was like you're killing yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're just not healthy. Yeah. And so I made the tough decision and I walked away and came back home. And that's when I met you Yep. Mm -hmm. in like probably late 2009, early 2010. Mm -hmm. And then I came back home and started doing a lot of community service work mm. because I, of course I was depressed from yeah. walking away from a huge mm. career. Cause I probably could have kept going and maybe would have become general manager of a label mm -hmm. or a president or managed artist or whatever. Right. So it was, can you imagine what it was like, like walking away from something you had done your whole life no. and worked so hard for, but I started doing a lot of community work in Atlanta, mm. feeding the homeless, working with the United way. Um, God was just moving me yeah. to like do something different and who knew that he would set me up, you know, for the greatest assignment that yes. I had ever had. But it didn't come without difficulties. So mm -hmm. the first few years I was home, I started doing some consulting, started consulting with Divine Steven mm -hmm. at Upfront Entertainment. I started working with Johnny Gill and Kelly Price. And I started ATL Live on the Park. That, I used to go to that. Yeah, Did you? I used, yeah. yeah. It was like the hottest showcase in Atlanta. It was so much fun. <laughs> so that yes. was good. We had a 10 year run. But again, I'm doing, I'm just doing, I'm going, I'm going, I'm doing, but I'm not looking internal. You and never I'm stopped. Not, I never stopped to mm -hmm. look within. 
So 2014 came and I remember I was going on vacation to visit a family friend in Switzerland mm -hmm. and I was about to board the plane and my best friend had called me and she said, hey, have you gotten on the plane yet? And I said, no, what's going on? She said, oh my gosh, it's the worst day of my life. And I said, okay, hold on, let's mm -hmm. figure it out. I know she was dealing with some physical health issues, yeah. which caused some mental health issues. And so I talked to her for about 20 minutes and I said, while I'm on the plane, I'm going to have you... Text my sister so we can try to find you a new therapist, and mm -hmm. I'm going to also try to find you another medical doctor to help yeah. with the situation we're dealing with. Long story short, I land, drop my bags, go to lunch with um, my bonus sister over there, and got a call that she had shot herself. What? When I tell you Oof. that that was one of the worst days of my life, mm -hmm. I had to immediately find a flight back to America. Mm -hmm. By the time I got back and got to Grady, she was on life support. Mm. And she passed. And so that year was a really dark year for me. Even yeah. though I was still working, I was so depressed. Yeah. And trying to figure out, like going back to retrace that phone call. Yes. What did I miss? Mm -hmm. So I was kind of blaming myself, yeah. which I know we're not supposed to, but we're human. Mm -hmm. And so I just blamed myself. And that sent me in a downward spiral. And um, it's funny, I tell this story all the time. Mm -hmm because I speak all around the world now, sharing my story, trying to be vulnerable and, and yeah. help others. But I almost took my own life in September of 2015. I had gotten to a point where between my best friend's suicide, my father's suicide, walking away from my career, and I'm pretty, I'm an open book. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have gone from having a lot of money to no money. Yeah. I walked away from it all. You and did. so that nest egg, went away mm -hmm. and you know how when you consult with artists some months are better than others so mm -hmm. I almost lost my home twice mm. and I was like okay God I don't know what else to do yeah I think I'm done I have done all that I think I could do here I've worked with some of the best artists and more importantly I just needed that pain to go away yeah Crystal I didn't want to die right I just wanted the pain to stop but I didn't know what else to do and so I had counted up all the pills in my cabinet and I knew that had I stayed in my house that night, I was going to take them. Yeah. And so I got out and just started driving around town. Um, and God makes no mistakes. He placed one of my friends in my pathway that night, way on the other side of town. Wow. I'm like, you need some, what are you doing on this right. side of town? But she knew something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make a joke of it, but she was like, mm -mm. what's going on? Something's mm -hmm. not right. And so I called my sister who was living in Charlotte at the time, and she convinced me to call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is 1-800-273-TALK. But now you can call 988 mm -hmm. if you're in crisis. And then I texted my pastor, Dr. Warnock, who is now Senator yes, Warnock. And yes, Because I'm a member of Ebenezer, and mm -hmm. he was like, you got to go to the doctor. Yes. He said, I'll pray with you. But you need to go to the doctor. He gives us some help. Yeah. So I got the help that I needed. Wow. I went to see a psychiatrist and started on my antidepressants. First time I was ever on mm. antidepressants, and it helped. Mm. And so I came up with the hashtag Silence of Shame. Yeah. And that's how it really all started, yeah, just awesome. as a hashtag. From And I know I probably went a long way around. No, they to tell, need to but hear I need, this. I wanted everybody to know, like, mm -hmm. this is a journey. Yeah. It wasn't like me jumping on a bandwagon or trying mm -hmm. to do something. I mean, I was talking about these issues in 2015 mm -hmm. before a lot of people in our community were comfortable with opening up, yeah. you know, to share, at least people in the music space, right, mm -hmm. in our circle. Right, yeah. So then it turned into a nonprofit and yeah. we've been, hope, you know, hopefully saving lives ever since. Mm -hmm. Wow, what was that healing process like for you when, it, it, when you finally said, okay, I'm gonna go get help? It was emotional. Mm -hmm. um, because again, I was dealing with a lot of unresolved trauma about my dad and thinking something was wrong with me anyway, even though I was this high achiever. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot of like, you know, late nights and te tearful nights, mm -hmm. um, but it was a sense of relief. Mm -hmm. And I was like, goodness, you know, is this what I should have done or we as a family should have done mm -hmm. years ago? And again, I have to credit my sister and thank her mm -hmm. for just always pushing me yeah. to be my best self mm -hmm. and to get the help that we need. Like anybody that has sisters, y'all got sisters out there, hold on to them. Yes. They are the best thing ever. And um, it was just really tough. But then as things were going great with Silence to Shame, mm -hmm. you know, so we started our first probably PSA in 2016. Okay. And we started doing a lot of like community work with organizations like Jack and Jill of America mm -hmm. and and other groups and then in 2019 I felt like <clears throat> my world stopped mm. um, 
my sister passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we talked, yeah. Unexpectedly um, from a, a blood clot. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had gone back to get her degree in counseling. Wow. She so was she really was passionate. To, she was very passionate because we also have another family member that suffers. And mm-hmm. so she was dedicated. And so we were going to be like these warriors in mm-hmm. mental health together. Yeah. And she was about to start her own practice. And so that you talk about the healing process. Mm-hmm. I thought I was doing so good. But then when that happened, that was a real setback for me. Mm-hmm. And there were times, if anyone has ever lost anybody close to them, it was the worst day of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And there were times where I felt like I couldn't even feel my, like, like, it was almost as if, like, my chest was caving in. Mm -hmm. And so it set me back so much, and I was trying not to become deeply depressed again. And uh, I finally, like, maybe five months in, went to grief counseling. It was an organization called griefshare.org, mm-hmm. which was kind of from a Christian perspective. So it really helped me a lot because I leaned heavily on my faith, yeah. even though I had a lot of questions about mm-hmm. why it had happened. And so I knew that I had started this powerful movement and I couldn't give up, but I still had, to, it was almost like starting the healing process over yeah. again. And then I also had become my mom's sole caregiver because mm-hmm. my mother had Alzheimer's. And I just lost her, you know, in 2022. So it's been a lot. Yes. It's been a lot. But I'm still here, and I serve a a, a really good God. And every day I thank him for his grace, mercy, and favor over my life. Yeah. Because I know every day is not going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. But I'm equipped with the tools between silence of shame and all the resources that we have and then everything that I've learned um, as a child of God, knowing that, He's going to take care of us either way. Yeah. He's going to see us through the storm or he's going to be a, be with us on those great days mm-hmm. and allow us to bask in all the blessings of his glory. So absolutely. I, I live my life one day at a time now, Crystal. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Life be life mm. as yes. we say. And, you know, as I get older and start dealing with more just different things in life, I just try to be more present mm-hmm. for my friends, for, <clears throat> for my family members, yeah. you know, um, trying to be more present you know, as a leader, mm-hmm. you know, running this nonprofit and just, you know, try to help share and heal. Yeah. There's so much darkness in the world. That's what I love about you. Mm. And I love about this show um, and you, the name of it being Keep It Positive, because mm-hmm. there's so many people dealing with a lot of negative things out there. Yes. Whether it's from a gossip perspective mm-hmm. or hating on other cultures and different things that we're experiencing, the world needs more Keep it positive, yes, right? The world yeah. needs more light. Mm-hmm. And I just want to be a light in health and yeah, culture. Yeah. And just try to help people be their best selves mentally mm-hmm. and physically. Yeah, I love that. And I feel like it really is an assignment from God. Because he, mm-hmm. he'll he take you way down in the valley. Oof. But if you trust him, he'll pull you back up in yes. ways that you could have never imagined. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm on my way back up from the I valley. Love that. that is so good. You spoke about um, leaning on your faith. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of times Christians... Um, we feel like we don't need there because we have God, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm good. I'm good, but it's okay to lean on your faith and still have questions like you said. And, um, I'm happy that people are now leaning into knowing the having the awareness to get help, Mm -hmm. you know, and I love how everything you've been through, I still see the light on you, how you can still say, God's bringing me out of this and still speak positively because so many people get stuck in that dark place Mm -hmm. and it's really hard to dig yourself out of it. It is. And it's easy to like, like fall back into the trap. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, even for me, like, my mornings, mm-hmm. I try to start my mornings from a place of gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, excuse me. Mm-hmm. I try to start my mornings from a place of gratitude, and I have some prayers that I watch on YouTube. But then I might get on Instagram, and I'll scroll for a minute, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let me put this over there. Yeah. Because it's easy to get caught up. Yeah in the cycles and then you get down on yourself and then you're looking at somebody else's feed going, Mm -hmm. well, why don't I have this? Or why didn't I get invited to that? Or, you know, being a young black female entrepreneur Mm -hmm. uh, and just a a person in society now, we're constantly comparing ourselves to others. And so Mm -hmm. I have to feed my own soul and my own spirit. And, you know, it's important for us um, as humans to Mm -hmm. have accountability partners, but we also have to encourage ourselves. We do. And so I try to take again, my mornings to be grateful Mm -hmm. and to be at one with God and to find my encouragement there first before I go out into the world. You have to, because this world is crazy. If you don't go out armored, 
Listen, you are going to get banged up. That's right. That is so true. So and you got to have your own protection yes. and ways of support and know that, you know what, at the end of the day, like mm -hmm. I feel like hey, I know my father, my earthly father yes. passed away, but I still have a dad. Mm -hmm. yeah. God is my father. That's it. And he protects me mm -hmm. at all costs. Yeah, that's so good. As you were going through your depression and mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. um, at what point did those feelings become shame? And what could you tell others? Because I know other people feel the shame as well. I felt it. Yeah. What would you tell somebody else who may be feeling that? That's what a heavy feel? question. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, as I was dealing with my depression and my anxiety and contemplating suicide, yeah. I was embarrassed and ashamed mm -hmm. to see a Crystal Renee mm -hmm. or to see a big boy yeah. or to, my brother didn't even know, my blood brother didn't even know I was contemplating suicide. There is so much shame and stigma mm -hmm. around mental health and mm -hmm. mental illness in this country yeah. that it can be smothering at times. Mm. And so it was my own ego and my own shame that kept me from really talking a lot about it and getting the help a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. Maybe had I silenced my own shame mm -hmm. back then and gotten the help sooner, I would not have gotten to the point where I seriously contemplated taking right. my own life. But yeah. I didn't want to walk up in an event and have somebody say like, oh my God, mm -hmm. Shanti's crazy or, you know. Right, because that's what people would think. Yeah, yeah of course. And, so, you know, and I'm, I'm sure people think it all the time. Mm -hmm. I remember the first mm -hmm. time, it was maybe in 2017, or 2018, I had gotten into the Jay-Z uh, brunch, mm -hmm. the Rock Nation yeah. brunch. And it was the first time I had been around my peers, mm -hmm. you know, since everything had happened. Right. And even then, I was a little nervous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't have, I'm going to get emotional. I don't know why, but people don't, it, I, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard going from being on top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to being at the lowest point in your life yeah. and having so much complete shame about feelings that are natural and normal. If we would normalize feelings mm -hmm. in this country, we wouldn't have the shame and stigma. Yeah. But, you know, working in some, an industry like the entertainment industry and, you know, it's very aspirational and everybody's always in their Sunday best outfit mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. But I remember being at the Rock Nation brunch feeling less than. Mm and feeling like I didn't belong. And it was but my- But you helped build that. Oh, I know, you but know? I, I, again, it's just, it was a low point for yeah. me. And even walking in then having overcome a lot of that, people still weren't talking about mental health. This was pre-pandemic. Yes. And so it was my friend, John Platt, who helped mm -hmm. me get in, who's been a complete blessing in my life. He's a chairman and CEO of, of um, Sony Music Publishing, but we go way back. Mm -hmm. He still saw me and I appreciated yeah. that for him seeing me, but I had so much shame and embarrassment. I didn't want Jay-Z and Beyonce and all of them to know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that here I am, Shanti Das, who was number two under Sylvia Rohn, had worked for Donny Einer, had worked for Prince, had yeah. worked for L.A. Reid, yeah. was, you know, what they call crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm. I don't think the word crazy should be used at all. And no. I don't think I was crazy. I just don't think I was able to control my thoughts and emotions. And I just needed some help. Exactly. Which now everybody talks about mm -hmm. now. But mm. I went through a lot of personal shame. Yeah. Um, and again, shame within my own family. I opened up to my sister. Mm -hmm. But very few people in my family really knew what I was going through and knew the story yeah. until it started coming out. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, again, you know, we don't do a good job of giving people enough grace. We don't. In this world. Mm. And we don't. let me tell y'all something. As my mama used to say, keep on living mm -hmm. and you will go through things in life. Yes. Well, you wish mm. that you had the grace yes. or that you could bestow grace upon people who mm -hmm. need it. Yes. Everybody is going through something. Mm. We wear these masks on social media. Mm -hmm. We hide behind these posts yeah. and however many amount of characters mm -hmm. when all of us are going through something. Yeah. And if we would just hold on a minute and try to lead with a little bit more empathy mm -hmm. and less sympathy, I, I don't need you to feel sorry for me. Mm -mm. I just need you to understand that my life took a turn yeah. and it was tough. Yeah. But through the grace of God, I got back up on my feet to do something even greater mm -hmm. than I thought I ever could. 
And I, even working in the entertainment industry sometimes, I used to think um, professing my love for Christ and for the Lord was corny. Mm. Nobody really talked about God. Still don't. In the business that yeah. much. And I, and I know it's like church and state sometimes with business mm -hmm. in any company, right? Mm -hmm. But it was until I went through and hit rock bottom that I was like, no, never will I ever. Mm. I didn't say, never have you ever. Yeah. Never will I ever. Yeah not say how much I love the Lord Same. I'm, and I, how much he has gotten me through. I'm with you, yes. And so it is me flipping that, mm -hmm. right, and silencing my shame, yes. leading with grace mm -hmm. and bestowing grace upon people who even have maybe, you know, turned their head to me, mm -hmm. you know, wow. or not returned a phone call when I was in the valley. Mm -hmm. And I try to lead by grace mm -hmm. and create safe spaces for people to be able to open up and be vulnerable, but more importantly, to heal. Yes. I want people to know that hope is alive mm -hmm. and that healing is always possible. Yeah. And you get yourself some good friends around you, some good accountability partners, mm -hmm. some faith friends and spiritual leaders and and just mind your own business mm -hmm. and focus yes. one day at a time. Yes. And so Oof. that's how I was able to silence my shame wow. and to just not worry about what the Joneses were saying mm -hmm. and trying to keep up with everybody. Yeah. I just keep up with Shanti Doss. That's enough. Mm, <laughs> she got enough going on. <laughs> Good, bad, and ugly. So if I focus yes. on me and my life, you know, I'm okay now. Yes. Now I can walk into those rooms and I know that I shouldn't have held my head low, mm. but I'm human. Yeah. But I walk into the rooms now with my, ha my head held high. You do. Whether I have five dollars in my bank account mm. or a thousand dollars, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, none yeah. of that matters. Mm. At the end of the day, we can't take any of it with us. Nope. So it's about how you treat people while you're here. Yeah. And so I am letting God and grace lead me. Mm. And that's enough for me. I love that. And that's why I feel like I'm enough now. Yes, you are. You are. So, Ugh. so really, I guess what inspired the shift was really you going through your own. It was. Yeah, the shift was definitely from or the shift or pivot, whatever mm. you want to call it, was me going through my own troubles. Yeah. Right. And my trials and tribulations and. I always knew that I had a heart for giving because growing up, my mom, mm. we would go to church and we would drive um, downtown and we would see men living under the bridge. Mm -hmm. And my mom would literally cook for them. Really? And we would wow. pack meals. So you and saw I, that growing and I'm up. I'm like, you really bringing dinner? Like, she's mm -hmm. like, yeah. And so mm -hmm. my mom had a really good heart. Yeah. It's like, you know how you have different family members you put. Like, I got my faith mm -hmm. and my, my love of giving, mm -hmm. right, and community from my mother. And so... Like I mentioned, when I first met you, I started doing so much community service work. Like even right when I left Motown, mm -hmm. I read about the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Detroit. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't really have any connections there, but yeah. the city had lost funding. Mm -hmm. And there mm -hmm. were bodies buried in the morgue. People couldn't bury their families for like months because families just couldn't afford it. So the last thing I did before I left New York was I raised like almost forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars or thirty thousand dollars, and we buried thirty people, wow. just complete strangers in New York. Oh my goodness! And I didn't want nothing from it. I just wanted to give some dignity back, yes. you know, to some of these families, and Oof. that just struck a nerve in me. And it was the mm -hmm. first time I think I listened to God saying like, "I have bigger plans for you." Yeah. It's like the music was one thing, mm -hmm. but he placed me over here so that I could really could be a servant leader. Yeah. And that's when I started understanding what servant leadership was mm -hmm. and what it was to like really like put others before myself yeah. and to try to give back. And so I love that God gave me a heart of service. Mm -hmm. It's a um, beautiful thing. That word keeps coming up in episodes when really? I talk to people. Yes. Service, serving. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. That. When people ask like, well, how did you get? They always say my service. And honoring what God has given me. You have to do that. Yeah. What is it? What's the saying? Um, too much given, much is required. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. It's, it's what I love now. And, and so that pivot and that shift mm -hmm. was something that was natural, which I didn't even realize at the yes. time. Yes. That God would have me in this place now, running a nonprofit. Right. And being a voice. I would like to think of a, a critical voice in the community mm -hmm. as it relates to wellness for our community. Yes, for sure. I noticed that um, during the pandemic is when our culture really mm -hmm. started getting into therapy. Yep. What do you think that shift was? Well, you know, I 
tell people the pandemic was the first time I think that we all realized we had mental health. Because <laughs> people be like, oh, yeah, mental health, that thing. That I heard thing. that thing called mental health. I'm like, child, we all got mental health. Yeah. We may not all have mental mental illness. Mm. And so mental health is how you think, mm -hmm. how you act, and how you feel. Mm. Right? It's the ability to get up and have the wherewithal to go about our day, right? And so in the pandemic, it was like, whoa, what's going on? We can't go outside. Mm -hmm. We can't go to work. Some people are losing, you know, money, mm -hmm. jobs, you losing a sense of family and community. You couldn't go to weddings or funerals. Can yes. you imagine not being able to go to a funeral of your loved one? No. Or not even being able to have a service, no. right? So it, it, it stripped that dignity from mm -hmm. us and the isolation mm -hmm. more than anything. I think it allowed us to have to sit and mm -hmm. deal with our feelings. I said that too, yeah. And you got people that are in domestic abuse situations, mm. uh, toxic households and families. Aside from the loving families, there's a yeah. lot of people that are in tough situations mm -hmm. in their home life. And so people are stressed out beyond, beyond belief. Right. And then you think about a lot of people that thrive, like mm -hmm. being in the, in the space and presence of others. Like mm -hmm. you might like to be around people, so you might be a bartender, right? Yes. Or mm -hmm. in your industry, right? Mm -hmm. Working on movie sets. Yeah. All of that was stripped away. Yeah. And so I think it was an extremely scary time. Mm -hmm. So especially for creatives and people like us, girl, we had to sit and be all up in our feelings, as yeah. they say, more than we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And people weren't really, they didn't understand or weren't equipped with some of the tools of how to cope. So that first year, 2020, was tough on everybody. It was so tough. And that's why I started, I started interviewing celebrities. Mm -hmm. I started my own little IG live show oh. called Yeah Wellness. And mm -hmm. I interviewed everybody from Chuck D to Common to mm -hmm. Tisha Campbell. Wow all different folks, Swiss Beats, mm -hmm. about mental health. Yeah. And, you know, D-Nice, shout out to D-Nice. Yes. Love you, D. He got us through a lot. He got us through a lot. Yeah. You know, that saying last night, a DJ saved my life, could have mm -hmm. never rang truer, more oh true, right? Right. Um, but everybody was dealing with their feelings, mm -hmm. I think, for the first time. Because I think a lot of times in our community and beyond, mm -hmm. we come try to compartmentalize our feelings. And, and we're like, okay, let me place this over here, put this in my pocket, and mm -hmm. I'll deal with it later. Mm -hmm. We couldn't really do that as much in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then you add what we experienced in terms of racial trauma as a culture. And we saw, you know, what happened <sighs> with George, George Floyd. And may he rest in peace yes. and, and blessings and, and prayers of comfort to his family. Mm -hmm. We literally watched the brutality so over hard. and over again, Ahmaud Arbery, like so many mm -hmm. different people. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of trauma on us yeah. as a people and as a nation. And so we didn't know how to get through one day to the other. Mm -hmm. And so the, the interesting thing is I thought that I wouldn't have a lot to do during the pandemic. And I was busier than I had ever been. Mm -hmm. I did more webinars mm -hmm. and IG lives and talks. And, and God, again, set me up for that mm -hmm. moment, yeah. you know, from a mental health perspective to be able to help heal our culture. And out of that, I was just, you know, so inspired and, and my team was so grateful to people like Carrie Hilson, who mm -hmm. spoke about her depression for the first time on a Silence of Shame panel yeah. and, you know, CeeLo Green and mm -hmm. artists like Big Crit, yes. who did a one-on-one -on -one with me talking about what he had experienced with mm -hmm. substance abuse. And, mm -hmm. you know, so many artists, G Herbo that I talked to, mm -hmm. and I even, did a talk with Saweetie, wow. you know, during the pandemic. A lot of young and older artists, mm -hmm. and, and it was I was very humble to be in that position, but very grateful to be yeah. able to assist the community. That's and so I feel like people felt like Silence of Shame was a safe place, mm -hmm. and I think still is a safe place because even just earlier this year in May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, DJ Drama, who we all love, yes. one of the hottest artists and mixtape DJs out mm -hmm. there, he spoke publicly for the first time mm -hmm. about his addiction. Mm. And he's been sober for over a year now, Good. and he waited to have that conversation with me. Mm -hmm. That's all God. Yep. It, yeah, and, for sure. You know, allowing me to, to be vulnerable and transparent mm -hmm. and, and humbling myself so that I can put others first in, yeah. in all that they're dealing with. But I don't think I would have been able to do all of this. Again, going back to your question, had I not been in the valley right. and gone through my own level of trauma and stress mm -hmm. and for people to see me coming out on the other side. Yes, it's encouraging. Yeah. yeah. And I still have my moments, mm -hmm. you know, I, I still struggle with the grief. Yes. Um, I still struggle every blue moon, uh, you know, 
there'll be like a fleeting moment of, mm-hmm. or, am I supposed to still be mm-hmm. here? What am I doing? And then I feel like that's just the devil and I have to block it out or I'll, you know, book a therapy session or travel. I love to travel too. And that is what keeps me sane. Mm-hmm. But I love, I love, yeah. I love the work. I love that. You talked about all the artists that you spoke with during the pandemic. And um, now I see a lot of artists, especially rappers that are speaking out publicly about the importance of therapy mm-hmm. from Jeezy. He just came out with a book and he spoke about um, how therapy has helped him and yeah. he knew he needed it. Yeah. Jay-Z has talked about it. Kendrick Lamar, um, Andre has spoken out about it. Mm-hmm. So many um, artists and black men. What do you feel like um, it is about our black men in our community that is making them realize, I need to get some help? That's a great question. And then, you know, shout out to, to Jeezy, Jay-Z, yes. Andre, Kendrick's whole album was pretty much but, like yeah. an old <laughs> therapy, Literally. which I loved. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, black men, I think, um, have been taught for for years, mm-hmm. right, and centuries to suppress their feelings yes. and that they always have to be the strong ones and mm. that they're weak, you know, if they, you know, show signs of vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And that can be the farthest thing, through, you know, from the truth. Mm-hmm. And so I do think black men are now at a point, having dealt with so much from racial inequality mm-hmm. and police brutality, that they're now finally getting this sense of, mm-hmm. you know what, um, it's okay not to be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those leaders that you yes. mentioned in the culture and in the community coming out saying, it's okay to open up and talk to someone. Mm-hmm. And then also I have to credit, you know, our black women for giving the black men permission, mm-hmm. you know, to be vulnerable yes. within their own families. We have to do that. We have to do that. We got to come together as a collective unit and family, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not saying, you know, that we dwell on the negativity, but you got to allow the man and the woman each, you mm-hmm. know, to deal with their own, yeah. you know, vulnerabilities and, and frust- frustrations. And especially teach our young black boys that it's okay to be vulnerable because mm-hmm. suicide rates in the last three years have been up mm-hmm. for black youth, 36%. And so mm-hmm. um, we're just at a critical point in mm-hmm. our country and in our nation so that we allow and empower our black men to yeah. be able to tell their truths and tell their stories. Mm-hmm. I have to also applaud um, King J, Dr. King J. Barnett, mm-hmm. who is a former yes. NFL player mm-hmm. and is now a therapist. And um, my friend Lamont Rucker, who I'm yes, sure is one yes, of your friends, Lamont, yeah. they have a tour called Just Hill Bro. Mm-hmm. And they go into major cities and yeah. host these intimate conversations for black men and black boys. And it's just such a beautiful that thing to beautiful. see that our black men are finally embracing all sides yes. of their feelings, right? Yes. And not suppressing any of it. Mm-hmm. And, not, and they're not, um, you know, using it as a sign of weakness, right? They're actually looking at it as one of their superpowers, yes. right? And so I love that. And I think we're, we're seeing a lot of transformation mm-hmm. in a positive way. And hopefully people in our communities, especially in athletes, uh, our athletes and entertainers will continue to use their voices for good yeah. and let people know that it, it's it's okay to, to have a vulnerable side, right? It is. And more importantly, to get the help that you need. Right. We don't want you to just open up those feelings and sit with them. Mm-hmm. Sit with them with a therapist, yeah. right? Go sit on somebody's couch, couch and get like some this help. and get some help. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. It's a beautiful thing. Your life has so much purpose, Shanti. Oh, and I'm just thank you. so grateful that you didn't let those urges um, get the best of you because the world needs you. Oh, like seriously, um, with everything that you've been through, what do you want your legacy to be? I just want people to always know that I care. Yeah, I feel um, that. I, I do every time I'm around you. I meet strangers mm-hmm. all the time, Crystal. Yep. I just met a lady the other day. I'm running errands in mm-hmm. the mall, and she was like, "Are you the lady from Silas <laughs> Shade?" <laughs> Yeah, yes. she said, oh, my God, I've been following you for five years Wow! since she was in graduate school, and now she has her own practice. She was like, you were a big part of why I wanted to start my practice. I was like, what? See. And, I mean, and then I was in the airport mm-hmm. and ran into another lady literally 6 in the morning waiting <laughs> to get breakfast. And, you know, I had, like, the morning look on my face, tired, yeah. trying to pull it together. Right. And same thing. Are you Shanti Dawson? And she said, oh, my God, can I just hug you? And I was like, okay. And she was like... <laughs> No, you don't understand. You helped my family so much wow. a couple of years ago because they had a family. And I try to, you know, mm. people will DM me and I try to respond. Mm-hmm. We at Silence of Shame, we don't do direct services, but okay. we try to push people to the resources. Yes. So if I can, can just 
continue to be a light. I thought I wanted my legacy to be Shanti Das, the music executive, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be um, Shanti Das, the, the health advocate, right? And, and just the human being. I mm -hmm. want people to see me Mm -hmm. And I want people to know I see them yeah. and that I'm there to support them. Well, guess what? I see you. I do. And I'm so, so proud of you. you. And I'm glad that you made the pivot and the shift to do this because you are making an incredible change on the world. Thank I, you. Yeah. It's, it's all, again, God ordained. And, and mm -hmm. now to be able to have my own personal thing with the Mevo mm -hmm. show, I'm excited yes. about that because that podcast focuses on mental and physical health. Mm -hmm. So like being able to talk to Hip hop artist Eric Sermon about heart health. Yes. Which heart disease runs in my family, mm -hmm. diabetes runs in my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I really want to just continue putting out so much information so that we can be our best selves physically yeah. and mentally. I love that. Shanti, thank you. Thank you. I love thank you. And I'm you so proud so of you. Much. No, thank you. We didn't get to talk about how much I love you and I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Like, you are just... no, this is about you today. Like, seriously. Oh, like, you. I wanted to spread the word and let people know what you're doing because it's so impactful. It means a lot to me and to our community. And a lot of people don't know where they can go. So I wanted to make sure that if they well, had a question, we got some. Come you can on, go they can come yeah. to my website, www.silenceforshame.com. We have a ton of re free resources available. Mm -hmm. And we just want you to know that it's okay not being okay. Yes. Can we repeat something that I love that I say when I do talks? Absolutely. Right. I am love. I am love. I am peace. I am peace. I am joy. I am joy. I am everything I need to be. I am everything I need to be. I. I. Am. Am. Enough. Oof. Enough. I love that. As long as we know that we are Oof. enough in this crazy, crazy world, mm -hmm. we'll be okay. Yes. I love that. Love you. I love you. Thank you so much. We're going to get into... Um, one of my favorite parts is when the listeners mm -hmm. write into us. It's okay. called Positive Outcomes. Okay. And we give them advice. Oh, I saw somebody. Yeah, I watched. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this one says, hello, Crystal. I am 26 years old. Growing up, I've had many struggles with older men, and I've been sexually abused multiple times. Sometimes I really don't know where I am and what it is that I want. I often lose touch in my faith and I get really depressed. My anxiety keeps me up at night if I don't find a way to drain, my, drain myself to sleep. Mm -hmm. I have nightmares most of the time that keep me from having good days. I've talked about my struggles with my family and friends. I just don't see the use because I keep getting back into this place. I would love to get out of this cycle, but I just don't believe that I can do it. The only person who really knows what battle I deal with is my partner, who is my biggest supporter. I often try pushing him away so that he doesn't have to suffer mm -hmm. from my constant anxiety and depression. I can't see a way out of this. A couple of times I've tried to end my life and just go away. Mm -hmm. Ooh. But I am still here and I do my best to find a purpose. I have no clue where to find it. I just got my own apartment and that's a huge accomplishment. Can you please give me advice to strengthen my heart and mind? Ooh. Ooh. My goodness. Um, first of all, thank you so much for writing in. Yes, thank um, you. I too, as a, I just opened up about this um, in season one about me as a child having suicidal thoughts mm. and um, never speaking about it publicly because, you know, in the black, fa black family, you just don't talk about certain things, mm -mm. you know, and um, what happens in the house stays in the house. So certain things you just don't even talk about That's those right. thoughts. That's right. Um, so I know um, what this is like. Ooh, I would. Um, so, first of all, I, being sexually abused multiple times, having issues with older men, that's, that in itself is already, absolutely, you know, creating a problem. That one, you have to deal with that first. And for me, um, therapy has really helped. And that's what I would say. I would definitely say go to therapy and start unpacking a lot of this because you, you have someone who loves you and supports you. You don't want to push them away, but it starts internally. And until you seek the help and get it and really heal from these things, you're going to continue to push this person away. And there are so many wonderful organizations out there mm -hmm. that help um, with victims that have been abused yeah. sexually. So I think you need to get someone who really understands the magnitude of and the, the scope yeah. of what you've been mm -hmm. through, right? So get someone that is experienced in dealing with victims in mm -hmm. that area. And I... Uh, I don't even like really using the word victim, so I probably, mm -hmm. 
would just say get someone who's experienced in that area. In that area. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, too, is when you're trying to find a, a therapist, I don't know if this listener is, you know, African-American or another person mm-hmm. of color or, mm-hmm. you know, right. white or non-Hispanic, whoever you are, mm-hmm. try to find a therapist that works for you. Mm. Um, there are some really great organizations out there mm-hmm. that ask a lot of questions. Like there's a website that I like called betterhelp.com. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, I'm not a doctor, so always consult with your physician before you try to find a therapist. But there's some great resources out there. And BetterHelp.com, they ask you a ton of questions, which Mm -hmm. is why I like it. Mm -hmm. And so you can really find someone to understand the nuances of your experiences. Um, I also think finding a really good, um, if if you are a person of faith, Mm -hmm. Find a good spiritual based home. Yeah, she did say she often loses touch in her face. So she is and a partner and that's hard. But mm-hmm. I will say for me, when I was in the valley of it, I remember going to Ebenezer like every other Sunday mm-hmm. or and I'm one I go to church. Yeah. I'm one of them church girls. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor will tell you, she come to church <laughs> when I'm not traveling. Yeah. But I say all that to say is it allowed me to be so vulnerable in church. And I remember going down mm-hmm. to the altar for prayer calls and just crying uncontrollably. Mm-hmm. And that's when I really knew that, but the tears were good. Mm-hmm. Cause I felt like it was those tears of a breakthrough coming mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I had to let it out. And it was like a spiritual cleansing almost that I was letting myself get it all out so that I could really get to a point where I could trust God and listen to him and know what I needed. Mm-hmm. So finding yourself a good you know, counselor and advocate mm-hmm. from a physical abuse perspective is great. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you got to put your team together. Yeah. You need a spiritual counselor. You need a regular therapist or a psychiatrist. I don't push medications on people, but I myself personally had to take, or I personally had to take uh, antidepressants. Mm-hmm. So that worked for me. So talk to your doctor about that and see if you're a right candidate for that. But then also getting accountability partners. I love that you let your partner in, but I'm hoping that you have a couple of other family members or girlfriends or male friends that will give you the grace that you need to help you. Mm-hmm. Cause it is a lonely road of trying to heal on your own. And I tell people all the time, you know, we were born connected to our mother's yes. umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. So humans were meant to be connected. Mm-hmm. We came into this world yeah. for, with a level of connectivity. And so allow your tribe and your, your crew to, to love on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I call it my starting five. I say, who's in your starting five? Those are your accountability partners and people that are going to help you through those really tough times yes. in your life. So my prayer is that you, you allow yourself and pray and ask God to help you pull this tribe around you yeah. and your accountability partners and seeing the right doctors, it's not going to be easy, Mm-mm. but with love and support and giving yourself the grace that yeah. you need to know that it's okay that what you've been through, mm-hmm. yeah. right? It does not define you. Mm. It does not dictate what your future is going to be. And if you allow people in and open up and be a little bit vulnerable, it will allow you hopefully to get that help that you need. Yeah. Thank Even you. when you're in those darkest of places. Yeah. That's so good. Yes. Um, definitely praying for you. Yes. And everything that Shanti said, I echo it because I know you have more expertise and guidance in that area. That was really good advice. Yeah, I couldn't do it by myself. I mm-hmm. needed my pastor. I needed my sister. Yeah. I needed my girlfriends mm-hmm. who told me that my life mattered, yeah. you know, and my doctors who told me this is what you need. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> So we're going to do next what I'm going through and what I'm growing through. Oh, I like that. Yes. And um, sometimes for some people, it's the same thing. What yeah. they're going through, they're growing yeah. at the same time. Because <laughs> um, some people are like, well, what am I? They're trying to figure out which one to say. Mm-hmm. But um, for me, as pertains to what we talked about today, um, I am constantly going through um, a process of evolving my mental health. Okay. Um, I got into therapy this year. Okay. Found a ma- um, Denor helped me find an amazing Yay! therapist. Um, finally, I feel like somebody, like you said, like you just told the young lady, find somebody that speaks to you, that understands yeah. you what in your needs. Yeah. And um, for me, it was, I needed somebody who had been through some things, who could actually understand when I broke down everything that I had mm-hmm. been through, that mm-hmm. could help me through it. Yeah. Um, so that right now, I'm really just trying to evolve more, unpack more. Okay. Um, 
I found myself opening up to Denora yesterday about something that I talked about in therapy that I didn't realize had happened to me mm. as a child and um, just constantly learning new things and realizing, okay, this is another reason why I'm, I may be like this as Did you, an adult. Do you find that something like um, triggered you at times, maybe oh. taking you back to that point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's how you know it's working. Yes. Because <laughs> you're starting to notice little things that can trigger things mm -hmm. and you know that's what you need to open up and talk a little bit more about. Yes. So you can kind of learn how to process it better. Every time I'm triggered, then we'll, I'll tell her and she mm -hmm. goes, okay, this, let's figure out where yeah. this is really coming yeah. from. I'm like, that's right. oh my gosh. That's yeah. good though. Yeah. That's positive. Yeah. So that's what I'm going through and growing I'm through. Oh, I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks. What about you? Oh gosh. So I'm still going through the loss of my sister and my yeah. mother. Um, mm. I have some days that I can just go outside and have a wonderful day yeah. and go hang with friends. And then I have some days and it can be funny and I don't want to open up my blinds. Mm. And that's when I realized I still have to seek therapy. Yeah, <clears throat> I was seeing therapy, my therapist rather, for probably a good two years. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I hadn't seen her for about six months and I'm now back in therapy. Okay, good. Because for some reason, this year, my sister's birthday hit me really hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talk about her constantly, mm -hmm. all the time. And yeah. I try not to talk to my family so much about it because mm -hmm. everybody has their own healing process. Yeah. But for me, I'm still struggling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lost my best friend. Yes. My big sister. And she got it. Comp she like, got it, everything yeah. in my life. Mm -hmm. And... My mother, you know, is still mom, even though she had Alzheimer's. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I feel triggered sometimes. Like I was at the store the other day and I saw a lady walking with her mom. Mm -hmm. Her mom was probably in her late 80s. Yeah. Holding the door for her. But like I would take my mom to get her nails done. And, yeah. you know, we had our things that mm -hmm. we did. And the holidays make it really tough for me. So, yeah. you know, I am still going through mm -hmm. and then growing through the fact that they are in a better place, mm. that they left so much wonderful knowledge yeah. and instill so much in me mm -hmm. that makes me the woman that I am today. Yeah. Um, I feel like um, from a spiritual perspective, like how there's the Holy Spirit, right? There's mm -hmm. the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's my mom, their sister, and there's me. Yes. And that makes it complete for me. Mm -hmm. So I try to every day pull from a little bit from my sister, yeah. a little bit from my mom, and stay true to who I am. Mm -hmm. And that makes me the complete woman that I am yes. today. So I'm growing through the loss of them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going through the loss of them, brother, and growing through just knowing that I still represent them. You do. And I know they're proud and of you. And I can keep their legacies yes. going on, too. That's amazing. Yeah. So good. Thank you. So we end the show with Keep It Blank, Sweetie. And um, I will say for this one, keep it real, sweetie. Because when you're real with yourself, you understand where you need help. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we can be in denial. So I'll oh, say keep 100%. it real, sweetie. I was thinking about that too. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I would say keep it transparent, sweetie. That's good. Because um, when you are not transparent with mm -hmm. yourself and with your friends, you know, sometimes it causes us to, again, go back to going back to compartmentalizing certain things and not dealing with things. Mm -hmm. But when you're transparent with yourself and the yeah. people that you love, mm -hmm. you put it all out on the table. Yeah. Right. And you're able to deal with things and process things in an effective manner and get the help that you need. That's and that's real. what leads to, you know, getting help or seeing a therapist. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you got to be real to your to your point. You yeah. got to be real with yourself mm -hmm. and transparent. And yeah. know what your needs are. Exactly. Because if we keep trying to fight it, mm -hmm. we'll never get the help that we, we need. We won't. That's so right? true. Yeah. So look in that mirror and talk to yourself every morning and be mm -hmm. transparent about what your needs are. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Shanti, you have been a blessing. <laughs> I oh, love tearing you. Up a few you times. are the blessing. I tried oh. not to break down. I was like, let me not do the ugly cry. <laughs> if you had start, I was already over here I like, know. eyes getting real moist now. <laughs> Denora over there like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you. I have a gift for you. Oh, well, you already got my book. Yes. So, so excited. Thank yes. you. And then, um, you know, we love you at Silence to Shame. Oh, so I know you. you. Look, she has so many wonderful hairstyles. Listen, if you do I rock your hats. Mm -hmm. And then we got your t-shirt. 
Oh, she cute. Oh, she cute. I love it. And then the oh, shirt. Oh, thank you. Oh, you can make your own. Yes. Oh, little lint. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you so much. And so May 5th is National Silence of Shame Day. So hopefully we'll be doing some stuff together. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I thank love you. you. I love you too. Thank you. thank you. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Keep It Positive, Sweetie. If you want to write into our Positive Outcomes open listener letter, you can write into Keep It Positive, Sweetie at gmail.com. That's Sweetie with an I-E. You can follow Kips on all platforms at Keep It Positive, Sweetie. And you can follow me on all platforms at Love Chris Renee and that's L-U-V-C-R-Y-S-T-A-L. I want to make sure that I shout out Shanti. She has um, Silencing My Shame, this book that you need to get. And also, if you are into the entertainment industry or trying to figure out how to get into it, you can read The Hip Hop Professional 2.0. Make sure you get both of these. Shanti, let the people know where they can find you. Yes, you can follow me on, I'm pretty much only on Instagram these <laughs> days, at ShantiDoss404. And you can get my books on my website at www.shantidoss.biz. And then you can follow my organization, Silence of Shame, at Silence of Shame. And then we have an app coming out with Microsoft. Right. Yeah. I know that's, come on. Yes. Uh, that's we huge. have so many great things that we're doing, just trying to provide free resources yes. to the community. So the app is coming, but for now, just visit our website. And if you want to donate to our little organization, yes. you can do that as well on silenceofshame.com. I love it. All right, guys, get these. Thank you so much for tuning in. In the meantime, in between time, keep it positive, sweetie. And as Shanti said, you are enough. We are enough. We are enough. Yes. Love you guys. Have a blessed week. Father God, we thank you so much for this moment. We thank you so much for getting Shanti here safely, Father. Yes. I just pray, Lord, that you speak through Shanti and Crystal, Father God. Guide their tongue, guide their hearts, guide their souls as they, as they speak on this platform, Lord. And for yes, those that will hear everything that they have to share, Father God, we pray that they will hear a word that will transform them, Father mm -hmm. God, that will transcend them, Father yes. God, that will open up their ears, hearts, and minds to whatever you want them mm -hmm. to receive, Lord. We love you and we honor you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.